This is one of sport's great proving grounds, a gateway to glory where heroes are made. 26 tournaments across 16 countries on three continents. It's an eight-month campaign to determine the very brightest prospects in golf. Finish the season in the top 20 on the Road to Mallorca rankings, and you'll secure a golden ticket to join Europe's best. That is the dream shared by all who compete on the Challenge Tour. Summer has arrived, and the sun is shining across Europe. And although it's still not quite business as usual for most of us, the Challenge Tour class of 2021 have been hard at work. Five events into the season, the road to Mallorca is taking shape. Lying 20th, Portugal's Ricardo Gouveia, fresh off a good result in Sweden. Plenty of experience ahead of him, among the standout names, four-time European Tour winner Marcel Seem. In his second season in Europe, America's Chase Hanna is lying a very solid 10th. And as we move further up, we find the Baines Whiskey Cape Town Open champion J.C. Ritchie, who's only played in three events so far this year. One spot better is our most recent winner, Felix Mori. He's narrowly behind Sweden's Henrik Sturhead. Craig Howie is looking good in second place, while Wilco Nienaba continues to rule the roost. Following three weeks in South Africa and a fortnight in Sweden, our season is well into its stride as we arrive in Dublin, Ireland, for event six of 26, the Irish Challenge at Portmarnock Hotel and Golf Links. Set in the grounds of the old Jameson Estate, St. Marnox, with breathtaking views over the famous five-mile Velvet Strand, it's one of the more stunning backdrops on our international schedule. It offers a contrast, too, from the venues visited so far in 2021. It's been a good start. I've enjoyed the travel, enjoyed South Africa and Sweden, and then uh, pleased to be here in Ireland. I mean, I know we're in a bubble, but it very much is a bubble. You know, you go to the golf course, you go to the hotel. Um, it's pretty much the same every week. It's just a different hotel and a different course, which can be good for a lot of guys. I think I kind of like that. Kind of keeps everything pretty similar, and you just kind of go week to week. But it does. It, it can't wear on you just because there's there's not a whole lot of escape besides golf. Hopefully, you can have a good week here in Ireland and kind of keep the momentum going. Chase Hanna is a relative newcomer to our ranks, but there's no shortage of experience in this week's field. Take Portugal's Ricardo Gouveia, for example. A three-time winner at this level, not to mention 2015's Challenge Tour number one. That year for me, I started off really well and then I just continued playing really well. I think I only missed one cut uh, that whole year. I had two wins and I had three second places where I could have won those three times. So I think consistency is the, the most important thing to win the Challenge Tour, right? Six years on, and Ricardo's form has been mixed, to say the least. Three missed cuts in South Africa preceded a third-place finish at the Dormy Open in Sweden. That propelled the Portuguese up to 20th spot on the road to Mallorca rankings. I think uh, the fact that I was back in contention trying to win the tournament was uh, really important for me uh, to give me a boost of confidence for the rest of the season. The level is going up, the, the young guys coming from the satellite tours are really good uh, and uh, us older boys, we need to keep up with the younger guys. And keep up he did, as proceedings got underway at Port Marnock, Ricardo sitting pretty in 8th through 54 holes. Another familiar face on both the European and Challenge Tours is Dan Housing, the Dutchman in the mix after rounds of 71, 69 and 68. It left him on five under par come Saturday evening, two strokes behind a couple of Spaniards. The first of them, rookie sensation Edouard Rousseau. The former European amateur number two is playing in his first Challenge Tour event of the season and shot a Saturday 66. Alongside him on 7-under, Alfredo Garcia Heredia, whose opening round of 64 wouldn't be matched all week. But they both trailed home favourite Dermot McElroy, the Northern Irishman one stroke to the good, which went down rather well with the locals.
Further Spanish representation on the leaderboard came in the shape of Borja Vieto, alongside housing in fourth spot, with the rest of the field realistically too far back to worry our tournament leader, McElroy. Looking good for McElroy then, the Ulsterman on track for a maiden challenge tour title. But elsewhere, the sailing has not been quite as plain. After picking up the game relatively late in life, Caelan Rafferty enjoyed a glittering amateur career, encompassing the West of Ireland Open and an appearance at the 2019 Walker Cup. It was brilliant, made a lot of really good friends, got to play what everyone wants to play as an amateur at the top event. Um, and this team golf, we don't get that much of it, so it's really nice to be part of it. The week from we get there to finishing up, obviously the result was not what we wanted, but we have memories that last a lifetime and got to play a fantastic golf course in the middle of it all too. But no, it was, it was a really good week, one that I'll not forget in it, sorry. This week marks the Irishman's professional debut, but the decision to join the paid ranks wasn't one that came easily. Indeed, there was a good deal of uncertainty and questioning, especially after this most turbulent of years. Obviously there, COVID has hampered it a little bit too. I had sort of made a decision at home that I may do it last year. Obviously things didn't go that way and I've always kind of put it off, just don't know whether I'm ready, I am ready at times. Probably my own, getting in my own way a good bit, but uh, it's just something I'm going to let happen. Um, I was a late sort of comer on the scene with truly amateur setup, and I kind of said I'll just take the same approach to turning pro. Whenever it happens, it'll happen. Hopefully this week, have a good week, and it might all sort itself out. <laughs> For me, just to see the standard, obviously it's that little bit better, it's a lot deeper throughout the field as, as opposed to the amateur side of things. So if I do well this week, it might make the decision a little bit easier and see how things go from there. As it transpired, there would in fact be no weekend action for Rafferty at the Irish Challenge, yet no doubt his time will come. The rest of the field were met with perfect conditions and had all to play for on the Velvet Strand. Overnight leader Michael Roy was well supported on the day, but simply couldn't match his low scoring exploits of the previous three days. Rolling in just one solitary birdie on Sunday, the Ulsterman's title ambitions began to wane. He was leapfrogged by playing partner Alfredo Garcia Heredia, the 39-year-old notching up five birdies, but also dropping four shots to finish the week in third place. The big moves were coming in the group ahead. Dan housing off to a hot start with a birdie at the first, then this his tee shot at the 217-yard par three third. A kick in birdie there and another at four gave him the lead at eight under. By the time the final group reached the turn, the young Spaniard Russo had matched housing's mark. A regulation par at the 10th preceded his tee shot at the par three 11th. A near ace, a tap in birdie, and we had a new leader. Housing's response came at the final hole. A birdie chance seized to set the clubhouse lead at nine under par. It meant the Spaniard needed to make birdie at the last to force extra holes. On in two, he had his chance. And just look how pumped he is after that. Wonderful stuff from Rousseau. So it was back to the 18th tee for the playoff. Housing, okay, so certainly the more experienced of the pair. Rousseau, adrenaline still pumping, overcooked his approach and would eventually require this six-footer to save par. Disappointment for the youngster, as all that now stood between housing and a third Challenge Tour title was about 18 inches of Irish green.
Late surges from five-time European Tour winner Michael Hoey, Germany's Paul Yannick and Spain's David Border sees them all rewarded with valuable ranking points. But it's Dan who's the man. It's hard to describe. You can work so hard in golf and, and not get, you know, not get much back to think about all the work you've done, you know, for this and then for things to come together. Yeah, it's pretty special and this makes it all worthwhile. The win catapults housing to third on the road to Mallorca rankings, while Rousseau moves up to 10th. For the rest of the field, attention is already turning from Ireland to the Czech Republic as the race for promotion to the European Tour continues. After the break, finding the edge, Czech style. I was kind of looking for something what give me the fast feedback when I practice. And horses for courses, Robin Dawson saddles up. They do things a little bit differently here and it's definitely a nice break away from the golf for a change. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to the Challenge Tour, golf's great training ground, where the game's brightest talents earn their stripes and hopefully graduation to the European Tour. The class of 2021 have arrived in the Czech Republic for event seven of the season, the D&D Rail Czech Challenge, the first of two visits to the country this year. Welcome to the Czech Challenge. With such a gruelling season of competition, preparation has become a hugely important part of the game. One man who understands the importance of keeping both mind and body healthy is the Czech Republic's very own Filip Rucek. He talked us through his process as he tries to get the very best from his game. Every golf course is getting longer, getting tighter, and you need to have the ability to hit a long drive, but still be straight. So for me, the gym, it's mostly for golf. You know, I don't, I'm never gonna be a huge guy. I'm a big fan of Tiger Woods. I mean, who is not? And I like Rory. You know, Rory's game, he, he's strong, he's flexible. And when he plays good, you just don't see any weak spots in his game. I like even Bryson DeChambeau, his style, you know, he just put a different style in the game. If you get away and you believe it is a good way for you, it just works. I was kind of looking for something what give me the fast feedback when I practice. You try to be consistent every single day, every single tournament you play on. There's no shortage of technology around these days, of course, but Ruchek is also happy to ditch the data and opt instead for a more field-based approach. Called the Zero Golf, which is a carbon stick. It is straight grip and it's only built for controlling the club face. After like a week, you really feel the differences. And I was hitting a little bit more greens regulation, especially with the long game, helped me a lot. So it was fixed and it was, it was really fast. Because I played golf for 27 years, 26 years, and I got a good feeling of it. So I was just looking for something that will give me the feeling and the feedback as fast as it is, which this was. And I just tried to hit a good shot and be ready to be consistent and just do what is the best for me. Well, Philip couldn't quite find the edge to contend this week, but for the lowdown on the tournament venue not far from the Czech capital, we turn to three players. First up is Prague native Stanislav Matus, who was the first Czech player to gain a European Tour category. It's always nice to be back and uh, playing golf on the home soil, so looking forward to it. The course is pretty long, it has a lot of bunkers. I think this is the course with most bunkers in Czech Republic. Uh, you better stay out of it, but uh, the fairways are kind of uh, wide open and the greens are kind of, uh, I'm not saying easy, they're, they're big, but uh, they're not tough to read, so scoring should be pretty low. It's my first time in Czech Republic, first time on this course, uh, and uh, it looks pretty nice. I mean, if the weather holds like this, it uh, can't be that bad, you know? So, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this week, that's for sure. Not my first time. I took part in the winning team in 2018 of the European Boys, 
with Spain. Uh, that was one of the best weeks of my life, so I have very good memories here in, in Czech Republic. Perfect conditions for golf greeted the players every day of the tournament. This helped Sweden's Christopher Blomstrand equal the course record of 62 in round two, set by no other than one of the Challenge Tour's finest graduates, Brooks Kepka. Blomstrand would be in a cluster of players tied for fourth after 54 holes, one behind two players occupying second spot, Rupert Kako and Julian Brun. The latter here making birdie on the 18th to maintain strong early momentum. But the man to catch was Norway's Christian Crow Johansson, improving his tally each day by one shot. Rounds of 68, 67 and 66 earned him a one-shot lead and a realistic chance of claiming what would be his first Challenge Tour title. No home representation in the top 10 through 54 holes, but it looks good for the Nordic countries with several players from the region in the mix. All but one of the event's nine editions have been held at Golf and Spa Kinetic Ahura, but as one of our young contenders found, there's plenty more to see around here. Hello. Hi, Robin. How are you? Thanks for having me, Robin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Uh, Place looks beautiful here. Yeah, welcome to the National Stat uh, at Club Rubin and Robin. The Irishman set down his clubs for the afternoon and took a trip to the National Stud at Club Ruby Nad Leban. From a very young age, I suppose the Irish fielder, the racing post was always on the on the kitchen table or it was on the TV, and just I love great, good day at the races and stuff like that. And I was like, just got it from a young age, really. It's lovely. You have twen twenty stallions here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. He's twenty. He's twenty-two. Well, I got a lovely tour uh, of the National Stud here. I got to see some nice stallions. I'd be kind of used to it back home, see what they have and stuff like that. And just kind of the way they do things a little bit differently here. And it's definitely a nice break away from the golf for a change. Are we leaving you in there? Yeah. Are we? Yeah. The highlight of the day was definitely getting in a carriage. It was my first time, so I really, really enjoyed that. It's no wonder what, how they produce such good horses here for carriage horses by the looks of things. I feel like I'm in Czech royalty here. <laughs> we, we can't do anything about the bubble, but it can be quite tough at times, and it's just definitely nice to, to get away from a bit when I have the opportunity. I grabbed that opportunity, and it was nice. Beautiful, aren't they? Well, that's enough horsing around. I know apologies, couldn't resist. It's back to the action, and we're all set for what promises to be an intriguing final day. Nine players are within two shots of the lead, heading into Sunday, so it really is anyone's title to grab, depending on whether or not our leader gives them a chance. Once again, perfect weather conditions, and it was a bright start for the man in front, Christian Crow Johannesson, this approach to the first, a signal of intent. The easiest of birdies there, and he went on to pick up another shot at the par five second. With Johansson in the final group was France's Julian Brun. He had no intention of letting the Norwegian run away with it, as proved by this approach to the par five seventh. He wouldn't convert the eagle, but a comfortable birdie and the pressure firmly on our leader. To the par four ninth and a player who surely isn't far away from his first win, Denmark's Niklas Norgard Muller. The Danes started the day two groups back from the leaders, but was still very much in the competition. That cool birdie putt ensuring the leaders would be looking over their shoulders. Bogies for Johannesson at three and seven left the door ajar for someone to come through the field and challenge. One of those contenders was Holland's Robbie Van West, who shot a five under front nine to get right in the mix. Meanwhile, five groups in front of the leaders, Spain's Santiago Tario was putting together an excellent run. This monster birdie putt at the 17th hole took him eight under on the day. He powered the last to set the target at 17 under in the clubhouse. 
Unfortunately for Van West, he would find water at the par 5 16th and needed to come up with an unlikely up and down to save par and maintain his lead. This approach suggested he was fired up as he bid to retain his spot on the leaderboard. Heading in the opposite direction, Frenchman Julien Bruin. Finding some great late form, culminating in this unbelievable pressure putt on the 18th, putting him in a tie for first with Tario and Johansson at 17 under. Johansson would leave himself with a knee knocker for par on the last and to keep his place in the playoff. No mistake, so it was all back to the 18th for our trio of contenders. The playoff was hard fought and went to the fourth extra hole, where a lovely approach shot left Tario with this part for the win. From six shots back heading into the final round, it is some performance from the Spaniard, as he claims his first Challenge Tour title. Fellow Spaniard Borja Vieto and Englishman Harry Ellis both claim a top 10 finish in a very tightly packed final day leaderboard, just one shot separating the top seven with Tario on top. I, a little uh, tired because it's my seven week in a row. It's too much, but so happy for me and for uh, all my team. I have a, a very nice team to support me in the bad moments, and th these moments are for all team, not only for me. A stunning comeback victory for the 30-year-old Spaniard, who finished seventh on last year's road to Mallorca, and will no doubt make a big jump in this year's standings after that win. And so with seven tournaments behind us, the road to Mallorca rankings look like this, with Yong Wong Ko in 20th spot. Those strong recent showings put Alfredo Garcia Heredia in at 17th, his compatriot Edouard Rousseau sitting pretty too. Julian Bruns' check near miss saw him climb to 10th. Our most recent champion, Santiago Tario, moves into the top five. After that Irish win, Dutchman Dan Housing rises to third, tucked in behind the consistent Craig Howie. And still top of the pile, South Africa's Wilco Nienaber. Well, that wraps up our latest instalment of Challenge Tour Life. From the links of Ireland to the greens of the Czech Republic, it's been a fun ride. Next up for the class of 2021 is a trip to sunny Spain, where a double header in Cadiz will offer a chance to make further advances on the road to Mallorca. So join us then as the journey to greatness continues on the Challenge Tour.